flowers bloom when they open up. That is a perfect time to cross-pollinate them. I was waiting until next month or until this flower blooms to show you, but I get so many questions every day about how I hybridize my whimsy that I thought it's time to make this video. Hello there, my name is Liz, a self-confessed succulent addict. Welcome to my channel, Growing Succulents. This is my own hybrid called Echeveria Whimsy. And this is my other hybrid, or should I call this Echeveria Black Whimsy? Because this plant was grown from a leaf taken from the same plant where my Echeveria Whimsy was taken from. So this is also now my own hybrid. This plant is so special because of the colors. One of my favorite plant, well I would say the favorite before, <laughs> was Echeveria Pearl Von Nonberg. I always love the color but the leaves are quite thin which I thought if there is such a plant that has the color of the PVN and the thickness of say a Monroe then that would be a perfect plant for me. That would have to be my favorite <laughs> plant and someone up there was listening to me and therefore gave me a whimsy so this is my own hybrid this is a chaviria whimsy how this hybrid came about is quite a long story and therefore necessitate for having this video this plant here is a black prince or what I would call my black prince. So you can see now the color. I'll move the whimsy across here so I don't hit it. This is a brother of my whimsy. If you don't know about my Echeveria whimsy, I have a video, a few videos actually, of my Echeveria whimsy when I chop the head off and then now it's produced all this wonderful pinkness. So in there, it's just blurring out on my video here. Even that you can see the, uh, I chopped the head off and I propagated it and these two are still actually uh, babies ready because this one here is a mommy. So anyway, just watch that video to better explain the when I beheaded my Echeveria Whimsy. So I'll put that aside. So this is now uh, the brother of the Whimsy. So they are the same plant basically or I would say came from the same inflorescence leaves. So when these plants, I've grown them all from leaves. I always thought that when you need to hybridize a plant, you need to cross-pollinate and therefore creating a hybrid. So the new plant will have traits from both parents. So say for example, in this case, I have cross-pollinated an Echeveria Black Prince and an Echeveria Monroe. Because I saw a photo of a Best Bates and when I saw that Best Bates, I was just obsessed with it. At that time, this is now five years ago, it was $395 for a small plant and I couldn't afford it. So anyway, I thought to myself, I have a Monroe and I have a Black Prince. The cultivar that I have is called Willy Wonka. So I have a standard Black Prince and this one is a Willy Wonka. So I thought I'll just cross pollinate the two. But there is a problem. This is the mummy, Echeveria Monroe, that I've cross-pollinated with my Black Prince. So this one now is, I would say, I've had her since 2016. But anyway, when I got her, she wasn't flowering and it flowered. And I thought I would like to have a black and white plant. So white for the Monroe and black for my Echeveria Black Prince. But the problem is they flower 
at the wrong time. So this one is August now here in Australia. So this is exactly August 28, 2021. It's good to mention that date so I can refer back to it in future videos. So this one now is flowering. Now this one here is a baby from that mother that I've just shown you. But this baby now looks different to the mummy. So if I put them side by side, you can see that this baby now is fatter and whiter compared to that Monroe that's there. Even the siblings, the babies over there are sort of different. This is just a league of its own now. So this is now also flowering. I'll just go closer here. This might be a long video, but I promise you, if you're interested in making your own hybrid, this is uh, it's worth the watch. So this is a Cheveria Monroe's that were pluck at the same time. When I say pluck, the leaves, they're all propagated from leaves. And the leaves were taken at the same time. And they are grown in the same soil. So I just planted them in my master succulent soil mix. And these are now only about two and a half years old. Can't remember exactly, I'm sure. What year is it now? 2021. <laughs> so 2019 or late 2018 when I got the leaves from the mother. And so makes it two and a half years or something like that anyway. You can see that they were plucked from the same leaves and yet they all look very different. They are all grown outside. There's no covering or anything. So this one is grown. <laughs> Even this one is soaking in water. So if you can see, that's dripping. Because this one is grown here. Look, water. There's no hole in that pot. But anyway, I just sat her there. I'm terrible, okay? When I say I neglect, and don't look after my plants, I don't. You can see now that that is a very neglected Monroe. I just planted it in the pot and then plonk it there. Now this one on the left is grown over on the opposite side there where it gets a lot of afternoon sun, but it's still open to the element, no head covering or anything. So it experiences frost. It gets covered with frost as well. This one's the same, it gets covered with frost, but this is a more exposed area because this one, I've had it growing in here. Over the years or months, I have changed position, so, but still it's the same orientation. So that plant has maintained to be in the same spot or getting the same amount of sunlight and frost. Now this one, I have to put this back over here because, okay, that way you can see where it's being grown. So this is gets afternoon sun. And what is grown? Oh my goodness, right down in the bottom there. And this is also another Monroe, but that one has got lots of babies. Look at that cluster, that's also grown from a leaf. So, going back to my best baits obsession, since I can't afford the best baits, I thought to myself, I am going to make one. So, what I did is when the Monroe flowered. So this one is going to take another month. So probably September, end of September, before this grows and blooms. So inflorescence means the whole flower stalk. So the stem, the flowers at the tip, and also the leaves. So these are leaves that are growing on this Echeveria Monroe. This one, the babies is going to come out of this if I do grow my plants, say from a leaf. If I take a leaf from the bottom here and grow it, they are actually fast growers. It's like a hundred percent strike rate with Echeveria Monroe. Now up the top here, the inflorescence, when they do flower like this, the, the stalk is just going to get longer. And when it does get longer, so these little leaves that's attached on the side is going to get bigger. And those are the leaves that can be harvested or taken and will grow into another plant. So at the time when this Monroe bloom, or not this one, the mother, the mother Monroe, the flowers bloom when they opened up. And that is a perfect time to cross-pollinate them. Flowers open up in September, October. And Black Prince flowered or opened up the flower 
open up in, in summer and autumn. Sadly, none of the leaves that were from my Echeveria Monroe flower stalk actually survived. They just withered and dried up. I don't have a succulent that's flowering or the chivirgia that's flowering at the moment. So this is my plum tree. Now, my plum tree is full of flowers. They're blooming. So now I'm waiting for the bees to come along and cross-pollinate or self-pollinate. So self-pollinating is basically taking the pollen. Okay, let's go here. So to take the pollen. From here, the bees will land here normally and then deposit it to, so this is now the antler with the pollen. And in the middle there, that little round yellow bit there, that's the stigma. That's the female part of the flower. This pollen on my finger gets deposited into there and only little legs or which the bees or insects can do that or with the use of a brush so cross-pollinating so that's self-pollinating cross-pollinating is say taking from this part and then cross-pollinating it to the other parts here so which is just really getting into the stigma there or the female part oh i'm sorry now i just lost one two three fruit i think <laughs> no but anyway so that is the process of cross-pollination or self-pollination uh, as the case may be so this is what i've done with my monroe and my willy wonka or my black prince Let's just stick to the black prince now I'm going to pretend that this is my Monroe flowering at that time. So I'm just trying to recreate what happened. So I took a brush. This is exactly the same brush that I've taken. So it's got long bristles. Only back then this is new. So it has to be clean and fresh and sanitized. So you can spray alcohol on it, let it dry up. And then that way you can be sure that there's no bad stuff that's in it on your brush. Now what I did is I just taken... I take I taken the pollen like this okay so the pollen now gets deposited into this brush and I took this brush and put it in the plastic bag carefully clean plastic bag you can't recycle plastic bag so don't use a recycled one so this is a fresh one it's probably even the same brand and I sealed it off so I left it there so the pollen of, you can say, the male part of the flower has been preserved in this plastic bag until my Black Prince flowered, which is in summer. And when my Black Prince flowered, I took the brush that contains the pollen from my Monroe and dab, 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 dab it into the stigma of my black prince and a few months later <laughs> the flower or the seed pods formed and dried up i collected some seeds actually what i did was just sprinkle it and sprinkle it into an empty box like this this is already full of weeds and succulents here but basically i just scattered the seeds and harvested the leaves that's in the inflorescence. So mainly the seeds, I don't know what happened to the seeds, whether they actually grew or not, but I find, so these are now leaves from this Black Prince. I would say actually this is already nephews and nieces because they're mainly grown from leaves that I've taken like this from inflorescence because I don't really, okay, that one now I'm gonna, remove that that's still sort of green and probably that might even grow a little plant there but I don't worry about that this one as well that's already sort of rotted but this one's now we're just gonna stick to the program right now and planted them in the styrofoam boxes like so I have arranged it so that each plant will have its own space and not being crowded by the other plant. 
So I have collected about 50, at least 50 or 60 inflorescence leaves like this one. This is what I call, call my inflorescence leaves because it did not came from the plant itself or the mother plant. It came from the flower stalk or the inflorescence. And I went away on my trip and that was at the end of autumn. We left for our annual gold and gemstone prospecting trip. Uh, in winter and that would be because we have reversed so June July August is winter here in Australia and we or I did not come back until uh, September at that time 2018 when we came back from our trip and these have grown from a leaf it's a, supposed to be a variegated uh, black prince my Lawi is dead. I found that my baby started growing like this. And you can see even this one. The leaves, some of them have dried up and the rest has started forming roots like similar to this. So at the time, I did not think about doing videos or anything like that because I was just more concerned about growing plants for my garden or growing succulents from my garden and at that time black prince just happens to be one of my favorites now this ones now did not came from my plant this i bought the plant i bought like this one here this came from ikea so i bought this one i haven't even have i i haven't even transplanted the the plant itself so it's still in that uh its own soil so anyway this one now this is already a year in here almost a year i think november last year is when i bought it so it's already a few months this plant here and a few of them that i bought started rotting and so i just harvested the leaves and left it here and the reason why i bought it is because so this plant is showing some signs of variegation this is already a baby grown from a bought plant from a shop so this one now i just leave it here because that happened a few months ago and then that uh, the mother plant died and left with the leaves so i bought actually a few of them and they all sort of died on me look at that so i bought half a dozen and i only have this one so far i think that's alive or oh, the other one. so after coming back from my prospecting trip that winter so we came back in springtime i found that most of my leaf grown or propagated leaves of my black prince has grown into a black prince except one so that's the only one <laughs> that grew and from what i can tell it was grown from a leaf not seeds the seeds i don't know if any of the seeds were actually germinated but every single one of them grew from plants like this so this is grown in the shade so this is the first generation or the whimsy brothers and sisters they are mainly green because they are grown here in the shade and you can see they're all still part of it and there's no mealybug. They have become hardy as well. My Willy Wonka, to start off with, is loved by mealybug. So, and these ones, I have only a couple of plants that sort of died on me. The rest of them have survived or are alive. You can see these ones, that one sort of died as well. And But those ones, even that one, you can see now that that is still growing. But maybe I'm wrong. That's actually <laughs> a... What do you call that thing? A black knight. So there's a black knight. Black knight. So black knight, black knight. And, and these ones are the black prince or the willy wonkers. And now my other willy wonka or black prince, I have grown under this loquat tree. And here they are. They're actually coloring up. And that one there, I can see that that one is being attacked by mealybug as well. And that one is another inflorescence, look. So, or you can call it a death bloom because, look at that. See, you can see that that's got mealybug attack. Now, that's a death bloom, so it's not going to grow anymore unless you cut it like that and baby ones might grow from that. So, this one now, we can see they're all coloring up in here. 
but that one that's being attacked is actually quite nice but anyway it looks like rippling water so now these ones now they're all grown from the same time as the whimsy those these are the siblings basically so and another death bloom or inflorescence flower like so we throw it away so this is all i do i haven't grown anything from seeds yet like consciously but this is how i propagate or I, how i mainly propagate most of my succulents <laughs> Can I just say this is whimsy brothers and sister? They're all different. And now, of course, what started as an obsession for my best baits, I might just get what I wanted. So this one now, you can see that it is sort of variegating. Whether it's the color is going to intensify, it would be nice if some of this color will get transferred into this and vice versa. And you can see variegations happening and coloration. It looks very different. So anyway, and I can also see a little bit of whiteness there that's being attacked by mealybugs. So it hasn't completely shaken off the tenderness to mealybug because I find that some of my plants have become hardened. Like the whimsy here, I have never ever found a mealybug on you yet or Actually, if you did get attacked by mealybug, it doesn't really affect it. Shade, shade, out in the open. And I can't believe the difference of the color. And even this one has got, look at that. It's got some little pinky thing going on in there. So it's changing. So anyway, now I have to keep an eye on this one because this is another funny Willy Wonka hybrid that might throw off <laughs> some funny looking leaves. Look at that. Oh, wouldn't it be great if this actually go monstrous and variegate as well? And it's quite fat. The leaves are really fat. So showing signs of monstrousness in the center there. And that is just a beautiful plant. Oh my goodness. Now I, I better put this back before I hit it or drop it or something happened to it but doesn't matter I got plenty of whimsies anyway okay so far but I still can't give them away because they're still under observation so this is a very wonka this tells me that this plant have been uh, hybridized so many times been cross-pollinated self-pollinated whatever has happened has happened to this plant so that's why so it's originally from black affini so now anyway i'm just rattling on but anyway i have to put this back up the top here so this is also grown in my 50 percent uv shade cloth area and look that's just yellow so i hope you just go yellow up on me uh, on an another one here is still under observation so another sibling of my whimsy so now, I don't even know what to call these ones now. Do I call them best baits or uh, Bessies? So this one as well, that's uh, inflorescence uh, leaves or the death blooms. And see up here, there might be some uh, seed pods in there that, ooh, like there is some seed pods which we can sort of sprinkle in there and hopefully we'll grow some new plants and throw that in there and my Willy Wonka over here you can see where the whimsy and my ooh, my now best baits get it straight from you can see it's going like lighter colored in there so again this these are the leaves that are responsible for my whimsy and it's just accidental so sometimes you know, like things just happen, just like us humans, how we evolve and mutate to adapt to our environment. And look, there's a lot of dry leaves in there, but they are actually lighter colored. 